Today's video does have a $20 giveaway, so if you want a chance at winning that, then all you have to do is comment your in-game name in the comment section below. And of course, if you want to play Aragon, then click on the link in the description that sends you to their Discord. And once you join the Discord, you can just go to the download section and download the client from there. A quick shout out to Divinity Code for winning the last episode's giveaway. Make sure to message me in game or through Discord in order to claim your prize. Okay, well we're starting today off with a bit of a banger because I'm going to be buying another crystal armor seed for 100 mil. So today could be the final day at Hunlift. Thank you very much to Imp for that armor seed. It definitely helps a bunch and I'm surprised that I've gotten two armor seeds with trades today. Well, not two today, but one today, one yesterday, all within like a 12 hour period technically. So of course Hunlift is going to be my main focus today because I only need one more armor armor seed until I'm done with that grind and I can finally move on to more enjoyable things. But I don't want to have any tunnel vision because today is the last day for the weekly task and I do have a couple of them that I want to do like gambling 123 times at the gypsy dealer. I can also defeat the world boss six times and there's a couple of other daily tasks that I can do this morning as well. So I don't want to get tunnel vision on the hunt lift grind. I can earn maybe about 10 achievement points today just from doing the task. But yeah, besides that, I'm definitely doing a bunch of hunt lift because I want to get this grind over. The only unfortunate thing is that none of the items in my shop sold overnight which is definitely a bit depressing the prices are a little bit expensive they're nothing crazy though i definitely thought something would sell and there's also no more rings of power in the shop so i'm gonna have to either make the upgrade myself or wait for someone else to make the upgrade and then buy it from them but anyways hunlift is gonna be a little bit weird until i get that lost armor seed because i am gonna be using inquisitors for my melee switch and not void which means my range switch is gonna be a bit strange at the moment because my only option for the range switch is to use this five-way void swap or to use carols and i can technically use carols it wouldn't be that big of a deal but i just think the bofa is way too good to pass up on so i'll deal with the extra switching but yeah i'm getting back to the grind because i have one more armor seed to get hopefully i get spooned early in this episode and we don't really have to do too much on lift because i'm hoping to get this done before a thousand kc i'm 200 kills away from that so that would be really nice i also don't even have an accumulator swap either which is not a big deal because i'm using charges but it also does bring a nice range strength bonus to my range setup so the whole void to inquisitor swap is a little bit weird but that's okay because i just got to get my crystal armor set as i mentioned before and my ring and then things will be a little bit more normal when it comes to switches but even then when i'm done with this grind and i get my final armor seed i'm not going to need to do any sort of switches for a while like i'm going to be doing raids of course in the future but i'm going to be sticking at next for the most part and that is a 100 melee boss so there's not really going to be any reason for any sort of ranged or magic switch anyways during the these last 10 episodes I've been praising the Bofa so much because I think it is a very good middle ground weapon that can definitely compete with some of the end game weapons depending on your perk selections. I feel like it's much better than the blowpipe, much better than the armadal crossbow and a lot of the other crossbows as well but I haven't even gotten the crystal armor set yet either so I'm pretty interested to see how good it can be with the proper armor set because I've only just been using the bow by itself so that's also something pretty exciting. Oh yeah a funny thing right here is that I'm able to finally use my ferocious gloves so that upgrade I did two months ago finally paid off I thought I'd be using them a little bit earlier than what it's been but you know what I'm glad I got the upgrade anyways and I don't have to worry about it now not that it's a hard upgrade or anything I just find it pretty funny that I did that upgrade months ago knowing that I had gold Rift void and I wasn't going to be using gloves but I'm like oh I'll use them in the future and technically I was right but you know what I was about two months off it seems like 118 slaughter finally getting close to 120 it's been a long time but we're almost there let me know what you guys think about the longer videos by the way I've definitely been enjoying them because I'm able to play a lot more turn the day now and make a lot more progress within the video and i mean speaking of progress there's been so much progress within just this last week i'm starting to make some really big upgrades that are catapulting me closer and closer to the end game i definitely expected this stage to be a little bit slower than what we've seen so far but i think it's just because i've been making a lot of money off of hunlift i think everything would be a lot slower if i wasn't making a bill and a half off this guy Let's take a look at the recent kill times right here. 42 seconds, and then 44 seconds, and then 38 seconds. These upgrades are making everything so much easier and quicker. First world boss kill of the day. I do have to do six of these, so at some point, I will be using a couple of my own spawners and then just kind of leeching off everyone else throughout the day. Just got an infinity top as a drop, which is basically like worthless, but still cool to get some drops, of course. It's always nice. And I also just got an abyssal whip a few kills later. It's not the greatest item. It's kind of like the infinity top. It's nothing too crazy. And as you can probably 
probably assume from my inventory setup right here, I did get all six kills done there for the world boss. I'm going to be getting six or no, four achievement points for doing that. And I also made about 30 mil just in monster tickets and coin drops from doing the world boss for about five minutes. So if you're a new player, definitely don't skip on the world bosses because they're definitely profitable. And I'm not even including the infinity top or abyssal whip when I'm saying that. So just the coins and the tickets alone got me 30 mil. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but I am at 850 KC, so I'm going to take a short break. Nothing crazy, of course, because it was only about an hour of kills, but I will head over to the gambling area to do some bets with the gypsy and get my weekly task done. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to be claiming all of the loot to my inventory. That way we could see whether or not I profit during this. I'm almost definitely going to lose like four or five mil because it's going to be 130 bets at a very clearly rigged table. I mean, just look at this lady. Of course, it's going to be rigged. It does say that the odds of winning are 45%, but I just don't believe that. I think there is definitely something sketchy going on here, and the gypsy should be probably put on some sort of an investigation or trial or something like that. Okay, well, maybe not, because I just finished up my weekly task. I gambled 250k 123 times, and I only ended up losing a total of 250k. So I take back everything I said. Maybe I was a little bit too quick to jump to conclusions, and I'm pretty sure that's all the weekly tasks that I want to do within this selection of weekly tasks. So I have 15 hours until they all reset and in the next video I'll have a huge new group of tasks that I can do to get more achievement points. There's nothing really else that I can do with those weekly tasks or daily tasks at the moment so I'm just going to wait for those to reset and while I wait of course I have to do more Hunlift kills. And there's another drop from Hunlift, but unfortunately it is Dragon Boots again, so not an armor seed. And that's also 900 KC right there, so closing in on a thousand. I've done quite a few kills today and still no armor seed drop, but that's okay. It's coming soon, I can feel it. And every few hours I'm also sending this message right here, just hoping that someone has an armor seed laying around and when they log in, they see that and they sell it to me and boom. Okay, well I might just end it all right now because I just got another weapon seed and not an armor seed. This is so sad. Six of these weapon seeds in only 900 KC is a lot. And of course, I just needed one more armor seed, so I wish it was an armor seed, but regardless, it's just crazy all around. In a good way and in a bad way. But you know what? I gotta keep going. I'm only at 920 KC. I can get to a thousand today, probably, so there's still a chance. I think this time I'm gonna make a blade because I do have a Bofa selling right now and I even dropped the price on it because it hasn't sold in a little while. So I think I'll make another blade and put that up for 300 just so that I'm not constantly putting up Bofas into the shop. Luckily though, a lot of people do know that I'm buying these armor seeds right now just to try to get through the adventure path. And I'm not saying people are grinding this boss just to get me a seed, but what I am saying is that if someone does coincidentally get an armor seed and they don't want it, then they can definitely sell it to me because they know I'm buying. So even if I continue to get these weapon seeds and not get my final armor seed myself, a trade coming through is pretty likely within the next day or two, I feel like. I would prefer it to happen right now. I mean, honestly, just give me the drop. I don't even want to buy the seed, but if I have to, I will. But we're definitely getting close. I know I keep saying it, but I'm kind of just talking to myself when I say this. We're almost there. I just got to keep going a little bit more because I have spent, at this point, a little bit over 30 hours killing Hunliff throughout this like last week or two. So yeah. 30 hours. Only one more level until the max level of slaughter. I know you can technically get 120 slaughter pretty quickly if you do some AFK bosses, but I haven't really done many AFK bosses. I pretty much got all my levels from the easy raids and from Hunlift. So it's really not going by too quick, but at the end of this grind, I should be at 120. I also did have a few players ask me why I was only spending like 100 to 150 mil for the armor seeds, even though I said earlier that I was going to be spending around 300 to 400. And that's basically just because I'm kind of out of cash right now. Now, when I was saying that earlier, I had a bunch of money and I also thought that the full crystal armor set was only three seeds and now I've realized that it's six seeds. So even at like 150 to 200 mil per armor seed, it's still going to be pretty close to one bill total that I have to spend in order to get all those seeds. I mean, that's just hypothetical, of course, because I don't need to buy all of them now. I just need one more. But yeah, basically, it's just a combination of me not having enough information about it. And also, I just don't have very much cash right now. If I had more cash, I would definitely be spending as much money as possible to get the last seed. Nine fifty KC, only fifty more until the big one thousand. And that is kill one thousand right there. 
hopefully I get a bunch of achievement points for that because that was a hell of a grind and unfortunately no armor seed on that drop either so I'm still gonna have to keep killing it okay well yeah that's actually a pretty good reward I got some shards which is kind of worthless I have a billion shards already but I got 12 mil cash and 12 achievement points so again I will definitely take that but yeah it's getting pretty late we still have a lot of video to get through though so I'm gonna go to sleep and come back tomorrow hopefully someone's gonna be selling an armor seed by then all right, so it's a brand new day, which means the weekly task did reset within this video, so I am going to be doing a couple more of those before ending things off. I always try to look for the PVM tasks that overlap within the weekly task and daily task, and this week, the only one that does that is killing Bork within 65 seconds 13 times. That is the weekly task, and for the daily task, I have to kill Bork within 65 seconds two times. So that is a free 10 achievement points right there just from doing that one task. Killing the Skeletal Horror 28 times for a daily task might be something that I could do. I've never actually killed that before though so I'm gonna have to see what the respawn timers and what the kill times are looking like and also I can kill Cerberus within 65 seconds 13 times that's also a pretty quick one and the miscellaneous tasks are always pretty good as well just depending on your luck that week because I just did gamble 134 times for four achievement points and now I can do the exact same thing all over again just only 65 times so this is a much quicker and easier step to complete than last week's 134 opening 71 loot keys is a pretty passive thing as well so that will happen just throughout the next few days and defeating the world boss is something that I always try to do but 19 is quite a bit so I'm gonna have to pay attention to those spawns I'm gonna have to start out with Cerberus because there is someone at Bork right now and honestly I don't even know if I can kill Bork within 65 seconds because I don't have any good magic perks the only thing I really got is melee and ranged and I know it's pretty strong against melee and I don't know how good ranged is so I don't even know if I can complete that so yeah let's just try to get a Cerberus task really quickly and maybe throughout the week I can get some extra magic perks and go back and get that done at some point of course I'm getting every single bossing task except for Cerberus. One great thing about this server though is that getting Slayer points is pretty easy once you have the Slayer Accelerant perk unlocked because otherwise I would be burning through over 100 Slayer points already and I would be like really disappointed. Literally everything but Cerberus. Come on, what is happening here? So yeah, that kind of sucks. I don't think we're going to be doing any weekly tasks in today's episode. Uh, someone's at Bork, and I have 23 Night Gazers that I have to kill before doing any other Slayer task. So I'll probably have to make an entire episode on that alone, because it is a pretty difficult boss, and I've never even attempted to kill it before. And I couldn't even get a Cerberus task after wasting 250 Slayer points, so that is really bad RNG. I could do some of the miscellaneous tasks, like gambling 65 times at the Gypsy Dealer, but I like to hold off on the minigame task and the miscellaneous task until later on in the week. I like to spread things out that way I can always have different content to bounce off of throughout the entire week so I can try to avoid burnout as best as possible and speaking of the daily and weekly tasks and achievement points and all that I do have a lot of perks that I really do want to unlock I want to continue upgrading my fighter sphere so my melee has the highest accuracy and damage possible especially since my next couple of grinds that I can think of right now are going to be focused around melee mostly but I also do only have three perk slots and things would be a lot easier for me if I just unlocked a couple of extra ones however the extra perk slots are very expensive it's 250 points so I could get something like fast hands or I could even make an upgrade on fighters fury or almost max out the melee striker perk I could get that like to tier two out of four but I do think the extra perk slots are very important especially if I want to put on divine luck and overloaded I just think it's time to actually start investing into these slots so I'm not stuck with three things here because even at Hunliff I could attach a couple of other melee perks here or luck like I said earlier and things would have just been a little bit better for the long run but I will have to get about 100 achievement points for that so who kind of cares you know that's all going to be like in a week so I got to focus on the short term stuff which is getting that damn armor seed oh actually I just went back to Bork and no one was here and I was able to get the kill in only 54 seconds even with melee so I'm going to stick it out here and try to get this weekly task done even though I have a halfway decent setup I really did not think that I would be able to get the kill that quickly because it's supposed to be very resistant to melee and I'm not hitting any like super high numbers or anything like that of course but the kills are coming in pretty quick which is very surprising so yeah my mood is a little bit better now because I don't have to do Hunliff and I can get achievement points today so I'm happy yeah that kill right there is 28 seconds so they're definitely gonna be coming in quick especially if I do land a pretty solid BGS spec just like that one 900 damage lowering the defense by 92 this should be another 30 second kill anyways 13 kills done weekly task finished and daily task finished as well for that the arena of avatars is actually a really good weekly task just depending on how many times you have to do it this time it is 19 times that i have to complete that for eight achievement points though and each run lasts between like three to four minutes for me so i guess i could do a little bit here a little bit there but it's a bit too much for me just to go and do all of them in one sitting so i guess i'll just end up doing like five 
five runs today and then five runs tomorrow or whatever and since it's only 19 throughout an entire week eventually i'll get it all done no big deal i don't know if i've mentioned this yet but you can actually use soul split in the arena of avatars on the easy mode and take almost no damage so you don't even have to follow along with all the mechanics this is kind of just here to help you learn but you don't need to follow them you can just soul split and dps the avatars down so technically you could do an infinite amount of kills without any food really here at the easy mode of arena of avatars and i mean the only reason why you would really want to do that is for the daily task because typically if you're trying to get a drop you want to go to the hard mode because that's where your rates are going to be much better but i thought i would just mention it because i know a lot of people have this weekly task that they want to do but it just takes a little bit longer or the mechanics are a little bit confusing and my tip for that is just use soul split keep in mind the soul split thing only works if you're able to do enough damage so you need to make sure that you have somewhat decent gear and perks in order to do that because if you're just hitting zeros you're going to be taking damage over time especially if they bring in those area of effect damages you will be taking damage from that so you need to make sure that you're healing up with the soul split otherwise it's pointless i'm also being a little bit lazy with this because i've only brought two combat styles when realistically you should have three but if i run into a situation where the overhead prayers are protecting from ranged and melee then usually the other avatar is protecting something different and the only time i ever run into that issue where i can't actually attack with two combat styles is on the last avatar and when that happens i'll just wait for like 15 seconds until it switches its overhead prayers and then i'll start attacking again so that is another tip you don't necessarily need all three combat styles it just helps to have them and the best thing about all of this is that the loot is also pretty decent even with the easy raid you can make around 30 to 50 mil an hour just off of the base drops that you get like coins and upgrade tokens you can get a rare drop i'm pretty sure but it's just insanely unlikely so i wouldn't even take that into account when thinking about the loot but still the base loot just with coins and tokens is pretty damn good well that's actually my first drop from arena of avatars it's dragon boots but yeah that's pretty much it just a couple kills for today again i'm gonna be doing a few every day because i don't want to sit there and do 19 of them i did complete a daily task from doing that as well though so i got three achievement points from that and five daily loot keys and again i'll just keep doing that throughout the week i'll get it done eventually but yeah i'm pretty much done for the day now i can't really push myself to do more hunlift kills at the moment i'll continue until i get my armor seed but at the moment i'm kind of burnt out so i'm just gonna stop the grind in the video here and live to see another day